In March of 2004, the Phillies said goodbye to Veteran Stadium with a controlled implosion. About a month later, a 30-year-old Venezuelan-born outfielder was saying hello to Citizens Bank Park with an explosion. Well hit the left field, out of here! Home run, Bobby Abreu! On April 12, 2004, opening day at Citizens Bank Park, Bobby Abreu hit the first home run in the Phillies' new home. By this time, Abreu had solidified himself as a 300-hitting right fielder, averaging over 20 home runs and 90 RBIs a year. But while Phillies fans appreciated his talent, it didn't seem as though Abreu was receiving the national recognition that his performance deserved. All of that was about to change. Welcome to Philadelphia Baseball History. On this channel, we talk about the history of baseball from the A's to the Phillies to the 19th century. And sometimes we talk about contemporary baseball issues. So if you love baseball and if you love Philadelphia, stick around and subscribe to our channel. Our heroes. They were given a special place of honor in our cathedrals to glory. You too can honor your heroes of your youth. Just go to tpublic.com and look for Philadelphia baseball history. 1998 was an expansion year. The Arizona Diamondbacks and the Tampa Bay Devil Rays were set on joining the major leagues. At the winter meetings before the start of the season, Major League Baseball held an expansion draft to allow Arizona and Tampa Bay to populate their new teams. The Houston Astros left their 23-year-old outfielder, Bobby Abreu, unprotected, choosing instead to concentrate on protecting fellow Venezuelan Richard Hidalgo. As a result, Tampa Bay selected Bobby Abreu. But Abreu was not destined to wear a Devil Rays uniform. Instead, the Devil Rays abruptly traded Abreu to the Phillies, seeking to secure a middle infield position. The Phillies gave Tampa Bay Kevin Stocker, a shortstop who had made his biggest impact as a rookie in the 1993 season. Promoted to the Phillies to give the team defensive stability, Stocker proceeded to hit 324 in the final half of that magical season. But known more for his glove than his bat, Stocker's offensive performance had trailed off. At the time, Abreu's batting average for two partial seasons with the Astros was 248. But once he joined the Phillies in 1998, Abreu came into his own, hitting 312 that season with an OPS of 906. In 1999, Abreu flirted with the batting title, finishing the season with an average of 335 and an OPS of 995. That was also the first season where he topped 90 RBIs. In his tenure with the Phillies, Abreu would play almost every day, consistently hitting around 300. But while Bobby Abreu consistently ranked in the top 10 in numerous offensive categories, he was repeatedly overlooked for the All-Star game. That is, until 2004, when at age 30, Abreu was finally selected for his first All-Star appearance. 2004, by the way, was the third season in which Abreu topped 100 RBIs. He ended the year with a 301 batting average and an OPS of 971. For his offensive achievements, he was recognized with the Silver Slugger Award for right fielders. In 2005, Abreu would return to the ranks of baseball all-stars. 
Only this time, he became the first Philly to win the Home Run Derby. Along the way, he shattered the record held by Josh Hamilton for the most home runs in a single round, with 24. And by the end of the season, Abreu was recognized not only for his offense, but also for his defense. In 2005, Bobby Abreu won the Gold Glove for right fielders. In July of 2006, however, in a transaction that Philadelphia Daily News columnist Bill Conlon dubbed the Great Gillick Giveaway, the Phillies traded Abreu to the Yankees, receiving mostly minor league prospects. When he ended his tenure with the Phillies, he had a 303 batting average for the team and posted an OPS of 928. On average, during his time with the Phillies, Abreu would score 107 runs a year, hit 23 home runs, and knock in 98 RBIs. But unfortunately, he would not see the playoffs with the Phillies. Abreu would, however, reach the postseason with the Yankees, hitting 333 in the 2006 American League Divisional Series against Detroit. Abreu and the Yankees would return to the playoffs in 2007, but again, the Yanks were bounced out in the first round. And in 2008, Abreu would be sitting on the sidelines during the postseason, as his former team won their second world championship in team history. Bobby Abreu demonstrated longevity, remaining in the sport through his age 40 season. He had bounced from the Yankees to the Angels, finishing his career with a season with the Mets. When all was said and done, Abreu had a batting average of 296 over an 18 season career. During that time, he would average almost 20 home runs per year and over 90 RBIs. Abreu survived his first year of Hall of Fame eligibility after the 2019 season, garnering 5.5% of the writer's vote. After the 2020 season, his candidacy seemed to gain some traction, as his vote total had risen to 8.7%. But whether Abreu's stock will continue to rise in the Hall of Fame voting is a matter that remains to be seen. What is clear is that Bobby Abreu was a quality right fielder for the Phillies. For his time with the Phillies, he was awarded a plaque on the Phillies' Wall of Fame. And as you enter Citizens Bank Park from the left field gate, he sits among the all-time Phillies greats for all the fans to admire. I hope you enjoyed that look at the Phillies career of Bobby Abreu. If you did, give us a thumbs up. Tell your friends about us. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any videos like this in the future. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. If you have any ideas for topics that we can cover in the future, please let us know in the comments below. If you would like to see more of these videos, please consider becoming a patron through Patreon. Again, we'll have a link in the description box below.